This game was a really good learning experience for me. I'm playing the black pieces, 60 plus 30 over the board game. And we have a Carol Khan. And we see the advanced variation with pawn to e5. And our chess goals Carol Khan course recommends 3c5, which I played. D takes c, e6 attacks the pawn, knight f3. So here my opponent, Tim, is allowing me to win this pawn, but it's still a decent line for white. The idea is white's going to develop quickly, and this pawn on e5 makes it a little bit difficult to get this knight in the game, and the bishop on c8 is trapped in by this pawn chain. So we see bishop d3, knight c6. My idea is let's pressure this e pawn that's the weakest pawn on the board. Castle, knight e7. The knight's headed to g6, which is a second attacker. All this is good so far. Pawn to c3, knight to g6. So now we see the double attack on the e-pawn, both knights attacking it, only one defender. So I knew rookie one or queenie two was most likely in the cards, and we see rookie one in the game. And now I play queen c7. I don't want to overanalyze this move, but I think in terms of understanding the position and the plans, here I should have castled. And the idea with castling is you want to play f6, and just open things up. Um, I can tell you what I was afraid of. I thought after castling, maybe there was a way that white could create a kingside attack with a move like knight to g5, but what I didn't realize is there's some pretty quick counterplay for black. First of all, you can even kick this knight, um, but queen to b6 is a good move here, lining up this battery on f2, and if a move like rook e2 is played, now we can take the time to take this pawn. This rook is tied down, this knight guards this knight, Black is much better in this position. So queen c7 here, it's an okay move, but it sort of shows my lack of understanding on the plans. And we're going to see this move, f6 and castle, repeated multiple times this game. These are takeaways for me, and hopefully I learn from this. So queen e2, triple defense on the pawn since it's triple attacked. And this is my first opportunity to play f6. I played bishop to d7, which is a dubious move in accuracy. But let's look at f6. Why didn't I play f6? Well, it looks scary, right? Bishop takes g6 can be played. This square is open. E takes f6 can obviously be played. I'm not going to have any pawns left on the seventh rank. So let's say takes, 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 takes. Um, taking this knight was a mistake by white. But this is a good structure for black now. Even though there's no pawns on the seventh rank here, the king is surprisingly safe. The h file is open. And these pawns are a nice center uh, majority, and they're going to start pushing up the board. White doesn't have an e-pawn or a d-pawn at the moment. Knight uh, to d2. On d5. Right, we're going to start to build this center. We have the bishop ready to come out. Let's say b4. I'll just show you a few moves what could happen. Eventually we queenside castle. We tuck our king on b8. And the engine eval here is minus 1.7. We're going to play for bishop d6. On e4, knight e5, our attack is going to be faster than white's. So, first opportunity here, play f6. I need to remember, play f6, play f6. I play bishop d7. Now Tim plays h4. This is a very strong move. It's the strongest move on the board. And the idea is the pawn's coming to h5 to kick my knight. On to a5. This was a mistake. Second opportunity for me, play f6. So if I play f6 here, great move. After e takes, g takes, um, we already know what happens when bishop takes this knight on g6. What if pawn to h5? Well, now I can play knight to f4, hitting the queen and bishop. And if bishop takes f4, queen takes f4, uh, let's say white plays knight b to d2. Again, queenside castle here. Big advantage for black, right around 1.8, stockfish eval. So game line, I play pawn to a5, but again, F6, much better move. Second opportunity, got to remember, F6. H5 played, now I retreat the knight. And you can see this is just getting passive. That knight has already played one, two, three moves. Just to end up on a square, it could be at in one move. Bishop E3, good move by Tim. He's trying to get rid of his bad bishop. This is my good bishop on C5. I play pawn to B6, trying to recapture with the pawn. Takes, takes, A4. Um, his plan is to slow down my queenside play. I play knight a7, and here is a chance to castle, followed by f6. 
first opportunity for that by castle here. Um, well, actually, let's play c4 first. On to c4, bishop c2, now castle, f6 on the next move. This again is a nice fighting position for black. So taking you back on my own Karokan journey, I gave up the Karokan as a main weapon for a long stretch because I wasn't able to pressure my opponents. Oftentimes your opponents don't make mistakes unless you can apply pressure to their position. When I revamped my Karo Khan, started the chess goals course, and really dug into some of these lines, you need to play these moves like F6, which we do teach in the course. I just had a fear of playing it for my own king safety reasons. If you find these moves and you can play them confidently, that's how you can create attacking chances, and oftentimes you'll get better positions from the black side. So here again, I gotta remember this castle and f6 idea. I retreat my knight, and I'm just trying to put some pressure on the queen side, but really there's not a lot I can do over here. White's ready to guard against most of my threats. Knight d2 played, rook b8 attacking this pawn, pawn to b3, so we have a knight guarding the pawn and a rook attacking it. Three point piece, five point piece, that exchange is better for white, right? White only has a three point piece tied down. So now I play knight a to c6. You can just tell I'm shuffling. I'm, I'm at a loss for a good plan. Here a better move would have been h6. And if white plays, for example, g4 like he did in the game, f6 is a strong move here again. Don't be afraid of this pawn structure. This king is surprisingly safe. The pawns are strong. Um, e5 is most likely to be played. Okay, so I did the knight back. Pawn g4. Guess what the best move here is? f6 or castle f6 or castle f5. All of these are good plans. Time after time after time. How many times do I have to have a chance to play f6 or castle in f6 before I finally play it? I play knight d8. I have no clue what I'm doing here. I'm, I was just psychologically beaten at this point, and I couldn't figure out how to get out of this position. And I hope, because it was so painful during the game, that in future games, I will always remember to play f6. Even if it's unclear, just play f6. As long as you don't think it's worse, this is your way to fight in this type of structure. Now I play h6, which was finally a good move. The knight retreats, and I bring my knight back to c6. In this case, it was a good move because now I have both queen and knight applying pressure on the e-pawn again with rook and queen defending it. So those two pieces are tied down. These two pieces are attacking. And again, we see a three-point piece involved with a five-point piece. That's a better exchange for me. I'm tying down less points. On to g5 played. Now I play knight to g8. This is a bit of a mistake. Um, the strongest move is to play h takes g. And after knight takes g5, I wasn't sure what I would do here. Well, there's a solution. On to f6. It's all about f6. It's always about f6. If e takes f6 is played, g takes f6, you might be thinking, well, can you get away with knight takes e6? The answer is not really, because queen to d6 is going to be played. And at this point, if the knight wants to retreat, this is covered, 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 covered. Knight g7 check is the only move. So let's say the other knight moves, knight f3. Well, now there's bishop takes e6. And after queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, king f7, rook retreats somewhere. This is a better position for black after rook takes here. H pawn's loose, material's even. This pawn's also hanging, and black's structure is good. So white cannot go for that queen trade. But again, it comes down to this whole plan of be ready to play f6. Open the position up. This king is exposed if these pieces can get into the game. If those pieces don't get into the game, then how do we ever attack the king on g1? So I play knight g8, f4, and now I reroute queen b6, and finally I start to see an opening after this king gets off of my diagonal. So king h2 was played. Now I play g6, and the idea here is I'm opening up my rook. This is where I finally started to get some confidence. Hey, I'm coming back into the game. I'm going to start to get some pressure on the white king. First time in the game, and we're 24 moves in. G takes h was played. I take back with the knight. And after rook g1, I stick my knight on f5. Um, interesting, if white played, for example, h takes g6 here instead of rook g1, I was considering just playing knight 
h to f5, sacrificing a pawn but reaching this position, knowing that my b8 rook is ready to come to the g file and this king is in a lot of danger. So I was ready to sacrifice a pawn there for activity. Rook g1 was played though. Knight f5, rook to g5, strongest move on the board. If h takes g6 is played, there's a cool line here. You can play knight takes g6 as black, and after bishop takes, knight h4, forking the queen and bishop, and when the queen moves, the knight recaptures. This is a really nice position for black, because look at how safe this king is compared to the king on h2. So, after the h and g pawns trade, you can tell black has an advantage um, due to the king's safety. Pawn to c4 I played in the game. Bishop takes f5. Knight takes back, rook to b1, so I was threatening this capture. Now I play queen to c5. I wanted to get the queen off of the file of this rook. Rook back to g1, a passive move, trying to defend. And now I felt that I was in the driver's seat. I played c takes b3, and after rook b2, I take the h5 pawn. Um, at this point, I should note my opponent, Tim, he was pretty low on time. I think I had about... 10 minutes left, and he was down to under 5 minutes. Double rooks on the b-file. This is triple attacked, but I grabbed the a-pawn. Now at this point, you can pause the video and try to think what's the simplest way to convert this. Um, there's a really nice move here. It's bishop takes b3, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, and now push the a-pawn. The beauty in this position is the queen, knight, and king are all sort of tied down and white only has the rook on b3 to play with. So let's say rook check was going to play here. If check again, here, check again, here. And at this point, what is white doing? Because this knight is pinned to the king. If, my, if the white queen tries to move away, like queen to d3, I have queen to f2 check. If the king tries to move, it can't go to g1, the queen guards it, and it can't go to g2 because there's a knight fork. This knight can't move, right? So these three pieces can't really move. And I'm free to move this pawn up the board with the support of the queen, and I can create additional threats, like if my queen gets to the second rank, for example. So this was kind of a complete control position, and finding that simplification on swapping on b3 helped quite a bit. Rook b4, a3, queen e2, and now there's one final tactical shot here. Rook takes h3, and here white resigned. If king takes h3, I have queen takes pawn, Forking, rook and king, and I still have this knight on the board and the pass pawn on the board. All right, so 37 move, Carol Khan game. Have to remember castle f6, castle f6. And this comes out of the structure and this advanced Carol variation with this pawn on e5 and no pawn on d4 for white. This is in the d takes c5 lines. Check out the links in the description. We have Carol Khan courses. We actually have four Carol Khan courses right now, opening middle game tactics, and a free quick start course that you guys may be interested in. Check out those links in the description, and remember, castle f6, castle f6, play these moves in the advanced Carol. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.